it's so great to see everybody's names popping up on the screen. I've missed everyone. And we're in the month of June. I am so excited. It is summertime. We are out of school. And I know for all of our teacher friends, you are extremely excited that this digital learning phase is over in this season of life. And I know for me and my family, we are ready for a break. We are ready for our break from school. We are ready for a break from coronation. And we're just ready to close the book on that chapter in our life. And I know that it's something that may linger on and we will remember all of the great things that we've learned during Corona, correct? But I know during this time for me, I have been able to bond with a really sweet friend and learn so much more about this young lady that is with us today. It's Miss Lauren Ledbetter, and she is new to our Southside family and new to my family, but we have just become the best of friends, and I love her and her husband, Chase, and I'm so grateful that the Lord has led them to Southside, but she is one of those young souls that I say is an old soul. She's very wise <laughs> beyond her years. And um, she has such a great message to share with all of our friends today. But thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us today. Would you just tell us a little bit more about Lauren Ledbetter? Sure. Um, hello, everyone. I'm excited to be on here with you, Candy. I'm pumped. Um, a little bit about me. So I am 24. I'm married to a wonderful man. His name is Chase Ledbetter, and he's from Commerce. I am not from Commerce or this area. So I am new to this area, new to the people, and it's been a really good season for me. We've been married for almost one whole year. Yes. Uh, it will be one year, so we are so excited, feeling all the love. Um, I am an Enneagram 4 with a 3 wing. Um, if anybody is into Enneagram, it is my new obsession. <laughs> um, I went to Georgia Southern, and Chase and I met there, and then we got married, and June of 2019, so almost a year said that, so yeah, that's me. That's awesome. Are y'all going anywhere for like a one-year anniversary trip? Are doing we are, yeah. We're actually going down to Panama City with a couple friends of ours who actually also go to Southside. We're going to be celebrating our anniversary down there and having our cake with a couple friends, and so that we wouldn't have it any other way, so we're excited. That's awesome. So you kept the little topper to your wedding cake? Is that what Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to see what it tastes like. About, I'm curious to see if it'll taste as good as it did on our wedding day. So we'll see. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it'll be even yummier. You'll remember it better this time around, right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Here's the hoping it doesn't rain. <laughs> yes, it won't rain. It, it won't rain the whole time, at least. But I'm so proud of y'all for getting away. And I just want to encourage you that that is um, a tradition that you have got to keep. And um, Jeff and I, we know that to make our marriage better, we've got to have times alone. It just demands it to have an above average kind of marriage. But so good for y'all. Well, so you talked about being new to this area. You've not lived in the, so you've lived in Jackson County and Clark County in the Athens area for almost a year now. So how has that adjustment been and what's been good, bad, and ugly? Um, we, we got our house in commerce about a month before we got married. And so Chase's parents lived like literally a minute down the road. So he was living with his parents and I was living in a house right before we got married, just moving things in, nesting a little bit. And, um, then we got married. And so we've lived up here for about a year. I'm originally from Millen, Georgia, but, um, lived in several different places. And that's part of my story, but that's part of the long winded version. But, um, I'll get back to that in a little bit, but um, I have really enjoyed living up here because I love the Athens area. It, when I was a kid, we would go to Georgia games because my dad's a UGA alumni. So whenever we would go to Georgia games, there was always just like the sense of excitement when you come in on like Lexington Road and I'm like, oh, I know we're in Athens now. So I always get really excited. Um, best thing about living up here for sure is going to Southside. Like I know that that sounds so like cliche but like that's really my favorite thing about living up here because it's like I have made all of my friends through being involved at Southside and that's been like a really big thing for me to cling to um I haven't really had a chance to like meet a whole lot of people outside of Southside so it's been a really big blessing for me to be able to go there and I think the other thing I love is the last resort's desserts <laughs> and can I get an amen <laughs> so 
is awesome. It's like when you're driving into Athens, it's just the hug of spirit. That it is. <laughs> it's like going to Disney World and you're driving up close to the entrance and you see the big Mickey and Minnie sign and it says, well, <laughs> yes. it's just like, it just overcomes you with this excitement that you just have to experience it to understand it for sure. So oh, yeah. we are excited to have you at Southside as well. But um, so tell me a year in, in marriage and newlywed, what has been um, maybe your greatest challenge in this year and maybe your greatest highlight? How about that? Okay. Um, I could go a long way with greatest challenges because, you know, you go in like thinking like, oh my God, I get to marry my best friend. And like, that is what it is. But at the same time, like you have to live with them and learning how to live with another person that you're emotionally invested in is like really hard. <laughs> And um, so that was really difficult. But I think the biggest challenge that we've dealt with is like learning how to balance our family time um, because we're both really blessed with the families that we have, like, but our families do things differently. And so learning how to merge that has been really difficult. And I think it will always be something that we just have to seasonally like take stock on um, because right now, like we've found our groove, but like when we have kids, we'll have to find a new groove. Like, God willing, when Chase gets his Chick-fil-A restaurant, we'll probably have to find another new groove. And so it's just always going to be one of those things that I know we're going to have to work through. But um, it's been a really cool um, way to see how everybody's come together to be a team and figure out what works best for me and Chase. And like supporting that too has been really big. Um, biggest blessing is just being married. <laughs> um, part, a little piece of our story is when we got engaged, we were engaged for 13 months. I would not recommend it to anyone. It was too long, <laughs> too long. And on top of that, we got engaged um, two days after our second anniversary of dating. And so the two days after he proposed to me, he moved back home to start a summer internship up there. And I was still living in Statesboro. So we were about three and a half hours from each other and his internship was with the Gwinnett Stripers. And so he worked a lot of weekends. And so we would go weeks sometimes just by FaceTime, like not seeing each other. And that was really hard. And we were also like really under fire by the enemy, just like dealing with a lot of stuff and um, working through a lot of things. But, um, you know, in the couple weeks leading up to us getting married, I was like, I just really don't know if I could love Chase any more than I do right now. And like genuinely like praying through that, but like, because we've been able to see each other every single day and especially with the coronation, it's been like a really sweet time for us to like spend even more time together. I literally am just like, I don't, I don't know. Every day I'm like going to bed. Like, I don't know how I could love him even more, even if we've like just had a big knockdown drag out. It's been like really cool to see how he is like even more become my best friend. So that's been a huge blessing. I think it was because it was so bad for about a year and then it was so good for here at a year. So big swing, but it's been really, really good. So that's great. Well, I know for Jeff and I, when we do premarital counseling, we talk a lot about leaving and cleaving. Mm -hmm. And it is difficult to navigate those waters of time budgeting and how much time you need together as a couple and how much time you're at work and doing right. ministry, but then doing time together with your families. It's important, but your marriage, your little family unit that Chase and Lauren have together is the most important relationship outside of your relationship with the Lord. And it does take time to nurture. And this first year does set a lot of good boundaries for everyone. And um, so I just say kudos to y'all for being wise in that and, and obeying the Lord and leaving and cleaving. And I couldn't agree with you more that 13 months is a long time to be engaged, but I, no, 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 sister, we were engaged for over 18 months. I was sitting there to calculate it, but it was a long time. And I know, I know the difference. And I know that feeling of just, you just cannot wait for that wedding day. I can remember on my wedding day when my dad and I had gotten dressed and we were ready. We'd already had all our pictures made and it was time. It was time to walk from the little building where I had all my bridesmaids and we had gotten ready and everybody had already went into the church and it was just me and my dad. 
And I can remember walking, making that little walk from the building to the to the sanctuary. And it was a gorgeous day outside, but these big white fluffy clouds in the sky and I was looking up the wind was blowing and my dad was having to hold the veil out in front of my face and I thought Jesus is coming back it is such a pretty day oh. and like I just didn't think I would ever get married to the man of my dreams and that I did I thought then I thought I'll never be able to love him more but girlfriend 23 years later it just it, it can't compare and it does it gets I better that. I promise it gets better every year and your love for one another will grow much deeper. It's a, it's a sweet thing to be best friends with your husband. So that's, that's awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about the last 60 plus days that we've been under coronation and tell us how it affected your job and, 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 and the time that you, you've spent, how did you spend that time? Um, coronation has been interesting. Um, I am a very like outgoing, I have to be with people kind of person. I tell people I'm like 70% extrovert and like 30% introvert. I like my time to myself every now and then, but most of the time I prefer to like be with at least one other person. And Chase has been working this whole time. Like nothing for him has really changed. And so I've been home by myself quite a bit. And, um, so it's been really lonely, but I think it's been a blessing because the Lord has gotten me alone in a lot of ways and taught me a lot of things that I otherwise would have rushed through at my 5 a.m. quiet time when I was working. And because um, now I have the luxury of getting up at like 7.30 and having my quiet time for as long as I want to and then getting down to doing whatever I have to do for work on my own time. And I think that the Lord's really revealed a lot of interesting things to me <laughs> that I haven't had the courage or the time to face. And um, he's just like, really, I think a lot of people will agree that he's just like really stopped the clock, put us all on pause and just said, I need your attention. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> and he was like, here's a lot of stuff you got to work on sister and we're working on it quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. So it's been good. You know, it has been a, such a huge answer to prayer for most people, I believe, because it has made a slow down and hit the pause button and to have a say la time mm -hmm. in all of our lives where we can we can sit and we can marinate in God's word and meditate on his word and ask him some questions Lord what is it that you're trying to teach me during this time and uh, for Jeff and I we've we've really contemplated this time is it an interruption or is it a disruption and I think that the difference between the two is an interruption it's just a time where there is a pause, but you just go back to life as normal when it's over. But then there is the disruption where there is a pause, but you reflect and you ponder and you, you evaluate everything that's going on in your life. And you think, okay, does God want me to go back to that? Or does God want me to change some things? Right. And so for, for us as a family and for our church family, we're really questioning those things and we're evaluating and we are claiming coronation to be a time of disruption, not interruption. So share with us like what what God has really taught you, Lauren, during this time of Selah. I love that term. I haven't heard anybody else use that, but I love it. <laughs> um, I'm going to steal that. Um, <laughs> um, a big thing that God has been revealing to me through a lot of different ways, but one way really in particular is that I put a lot of stock in what other people say to me, about me, whatever. And um, one of the big ways that I have seen that kind of come to life in a way is I've been reading Restless by Jenny Allen. It's a wonderful book. I brought it out so people could see it. It's really amazing. Um, <laughs> it's been really cool because it's kind of like teaching about how the thread, she calls them the threads of your life all come together to weave this beautiful fabric of what your life is. 
and what God's purpose in it is. And just kind of helping people like figure out like, okay, well, if you're asking the question, what is God's purpose for my life? It, she asked a lot of really good questions that help you kind of like figure out like a bunch of things that come together. And so one of the threads in my life has been that I am just the perpetual new kid. And I went to two different elementary schools. I went to middle and high school in one school system, went to Georgia Southern, uh, moved to Athens, and now I'm going back to UGA to school. So that's a little spoiler alert. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But um, I'm just like perpetually the new kid throughout my life. And so that has really enabled me to learn how to make friends. But it's also been really interesting to see how those friendships have affected me. And so one of the things that she asked to do in one of these chapters is um, identifying, I'm going to flip to it right here in my journal really quick. Um, a couple of the things that she asked to do at the end of one chapter is put highlights from each life stage where you felt things like pride and pleasure in the Lord. And, you know, from ages like zero to six, seven to 12, 13 to 18, um, 19 to 24, so on and so forth. I just get the, to the 24 part and then I'm done because I'm young. And so the other part of that, the counterpoint is identify memories where you felt pain and suffering. And the pain and suffering part was very revealing. And it was really interesting because I remember when I was in seventh grade, I was in Ms. Clark's class and she had us do this little activity where you put your paper into four little sections and she wanted you to like write and color a picture of some of your goals. And like one of mine was to like graduate from UGA. Another one was to like be a fashion designer. And I did that. And that was a big deal for me to put that on paper because it, I was like 12, 13 years old, trying to figure out what I wanted in life in the future and what my goals were long term. And those are like really high far-fetched goals. So I've always had this like achievement aspect ingrained in me. but. Um, then like a few weeks later, it was Christmas and I got a dress form and a sewing machine because I told my parents about it. I brought home this assignment and my dad framed it and put it in his office and it was really sweet. And um, I got a dress form and a sewing machine for Christmas. Well, my birthday was in February. And so for my 13th birthday, I had friends over and they saw this dress form and sewing machine and all this stuff in my bedroom. And they were all like, why do you have this? This is so stupid. And it was a big deal for me to like let them in in that way because I had just moved when I was 11. And I think that was maybe my first sleepover since I had moved to that town. And then immediately when that person said that, I was like, okay, it's never, it's never to be seen again. <laughs> and I just let that literally affect every single decision after the fact not necessarily consciously because I just buried it in that time, like after that. And then I never brought it back up because after that I threw myself into fitting in and being a part of the group. And what meant, what that meant was I had to be good at soccer. I had to make good grades. I had to be involved in FCA. I had to be involved in all these other clubs in middle and high school. And those are all good things, but none of us really knew what it looked like to support and encourage each other in what we wanted in life at that age. And so I don't necessarily think that I would call it bullying. There are some things that I think were said and done that could be borderline, could be considered bullying, but it wasn't like a constant season of like bullying in my life. But um, it was rough. Like there were some rough things that I think I dealt with. And I think all girls and boys deal with, I think girls just deal with things differently because girls argue differently. But um, I let a lot of those things and their perceptions and their opinions dictate decisions that I made even after I had moved away to college. And um, just for the sheer fact that I never wanted to face them because I felt like they were frivolous or my parents had different expectations. And so I was like, well, this is what I'm going to do because everybody says that I should do it. It's practical. It's easy versus doing something that I really care about. And so over the past year, I have been really, since we've been living in commerce, actually, um, in Athens, 
I have really been focusing on what I want career wise and trying out education kind of made me feel like, okay, well, maybe this isn't the Lord's calling on my life. Maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes, it's practical. Yes, it's an easy path for me, but it's not the path that's going to challenge me and mold me into the person that I feel like the Lord has called me to be. And so through a lot of prayer and petition, I figured out that the Lord was calling me to go back to school at UGA. And in praying through that, I decided that I wanted to go back for interior design, which is a big testament to those dreams that I had shoved down when I was in middle school. And then I got accepted to UGA in March. And then I started reading Restless by Jenny Allen. And through reading Restless and going through all these questions, it made me realize the root of why it took me so long to get back to this place of doing what I felt like I needed to do. Does that make sense? It does. It makes perfect sense. And I think about so many young people who grow up, you know, and it's that age and and at the end of your elementary school age, starting of middle school age, where, you know, you've had some, some really cool childhood dreams, but then, you know, when you're in those formative years, you're able to really get some air under your wings and start mm-hmm. dreaming about those even more. And I believe you do. You either go one way or the other. You have someone else telling you what to dream or you do have the encouragement that you need around you to, to do that, to dream even greater. And right. I can just tell a difference in even my children in my house who, you know, I have Ansley who was homeschooled up until she was in the 10th grade. And she was able to dream a lot of good dreams while she was here in our home. And they were just encouraged by mom and dad. But then there are others who are coming up now who didn't get that opportunity so much that she did. And I can see how an environment around them can really alter those dreams and those aspirations that you can have. Call it bullying, call it diminishing their thoughts and their aspirations that they have in their life, making them feel like they're silly. You know, I don't know if you have just in personally experiencing that recently and, and that coming to you being able to mine that out in your heart and in your life. Do you have any encouragement for a parent or for a young person who's making decisions right now as to how to not allow those words from friends to have such an effect negatively on you? Um, I think, and I do want to add this in, um, as an encouragement to parents out there who are trying to go to war for their kids in prayer. Um, when I told y'all that my dad had framed that sheet that I did for Miss Clark's class, I thought at that season in my life that my parents lived to embarrass me when they talked about it, because I was so ashamed by what my friends had said. I was like, you just live to embarrass me. And that wasn't the case at all. And it wasn't until recently when I was rehashing all this that I realized like, oh my gosh, my parents, I was so mean to them, but my parents were the ones who like truly supported me in that. And that was huge. And I, I mean, I'm 24 and I didn't realize that until a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and so I literally was just like blown away by that. I was like, I was so mean to them and all they were trying to do is support me. Mm-hmm. It was just such a big realization for me. So if you're a parent and your kids are being really mean to you and you're just trying to support them, please just know <laughs> that maybe one day they will realize that you were doing what you were like, that they will realize that you were supporting them and encouraging them because I was caught up in so much insecurity and my friends had this, the only sense of humor that they had was self-deprecation. And so that was the only sense of humor that I kind of understood about that was okay. And it's not okay. And so please know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. Um, I'm not a parent, so I don't pretend to know like how to parent your kids best, but um, I know that if you don't know how to go to work for anybody, kids, spouses, whoever in your life, this is a good read. I'm a big reader, Fervent by Priscilla Schreier is really amazing and definitely will show you how to go to work for people in prayer because, um, I like had to go to war for prayer for Chase in a lot of ways. And I've had to go to war for prayer in other people's lives as well. And people have had to go to war through prayer with me. And so 
um, that book has like really matured me and how to pray for other people and what to pray through and how to like destroy the enemy's words before they destroy me. And, um, it's just a very good read if you need some inspiration on how to go to war and prayer for your kids. And for young people who are maybe dealing with friendships that you wouldn't necessarily say are toxic friendships, because that's not how I would say my friendships were. I wouldn't say that they were toxic because I was into good things like FCA and all of my friends graduated in the top 10 of their class and I was 10th. And so that was, I mean, by all intents and purposes, we were a good group of friends, but there were a lot of toxic aspects and I invite you to call it out and say like you being mean to yourself is not okay because if you're not going to be good to yourself then you're not going to let anybody else be good to you that's insecurity and that needs to die because that is not that is from the pit of hell that is not from that is not from the lord the lord would not will you to be in insecurity and bound up in that um if you are friends with toxic people who are into less than legal activity i would encourage you to leave those friendships and pray that the lord would provide you with good friendships because when I went to college, my friendships and my community were everything <laughs> to me. Um, those were my, those are my people. Even still, those are my people. And they go to war for me in prayer and I go to war for them in prayer. And it was the sweetest season when all of us were getting married within like months of each other. And we all got to stand up for each other as all, I was in all of my friends' weddings and all of my friends were in my wedding and it was like the sweetest thing and because we all like served together in our church and had small group together and would check on each other and call each other out. Like if you were bound up in insecurity or if you're bound up in sin, like calling that out graciously and gently is huge. And if you're struggling in friendships, I encourage you that it is not always going to be this way. If you will pray for a new season and for new healthy friendships. So, yeah. That's awesome. I, I've always heard it say friends will make you or break you. And my mama always said, that if you hang out with trash, you're going to smell like it. So choose your friends wisely. And yes. they do, they, they will encourage you or they will, they will beat you down. And, um, I know for me as a parent, um, probably the hardest thing is if your kids have ever sort of pushed you away and you've seen them just kind of bulk up to your encouragement that you're trying to give them because we love them. There's no one on this planet who loves my kids as much as I do. And you'll experience that Lauren one day. And you know that for yourself, there's no one on this earth, maybe other than Chase that loves you as much as your mom and dad does. And we've told our kids that, you know, blood is thicker than water and we aren't going anywhere we're always going to be together but for me I found those times when I feel a little pushback that God is telling me to press in even more into their lives and to be present and to be to be a part of whatever it is that's going on in their life and whether they like it or not I'm going to press in it may not even feel good to me I may feel rejected but I know that it is worth it all for me to just press into their lives and into their friendships. But I just think about you and this season of your life and how you are listening. You are listening to God. Um, you know, Lauren, I want to tell everybody that God has chosen you. He has chosen you to be his daughter. And he has called you for a purpose that he has for you that he knew before we were ever born, God knew that we had a purpose. And I'm just so encouraged by you, even at 24, saying, I finished a degree already and I had started an education, but God is telling me that's not my purpose. And you're listening to him and you're obeying him. And I'm so grateful for scripture. And Philippians 1, 6 says, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He's not going to quit working on us. And he's going to give us every tool that we need, every ounce of wisdom that we need to carry out that purpose for him. And so I don't know. I don't know that you were able to finish all these good plans that you feel like God has for you and the next steps that you're making. Would you share those with us again? 
or yeah. I can't remember if you did. No, definitely. Um, it's been the coolest thing to see how the Lord has just redeemed all of that and given me the yes to go back to school and given me the yes to get accepted to UGA, which is like a long time dream of mine. And, um, just really just redeemed that whole situation. So the next steps for me are to go back to school. I registered for classes this past week. So I am officially, I am in it and I'm about to sign my life away on some student loans, but <laughs> I'm in it and I'm excited about it. And so that's good. But um, that will be my next thing going back to school. And um, hopefully in the meantime, Chase will get into LDP and get his own restaurant and over the next couple of years. And then long term, I hope one day to have my own like interior design firm and or like a store or something that also does interior design on the side. Um, and living somewhere where I can have community and people like you, Candy, who encourage me and call me out because this is a part of my life that I felt, you know, like maybe I just need to like work through this a little bit more, but you put me on the spot and you're like, no, you need to share that. And I appreciate you for pushing me in that way and, um, encouraging me to share my story. And, uh, yeah. Well, we're great. <laughs> for your story and your encouragement. And I just want to say to all of our friends who are out there to ask yourself those questions. You know, what is it that is you're passionate about in your heart? What is it that sets your heart on fire? What keeps you up at night? What gets you up in the morning? Because your passion will fuel your purpose that God has for you. And as sure as he's called, has chosen you, he's called you for something something more than we would ever think of for ourselves and so pray I love how you talked about praying and we do we need to pray for our families our friends but pray and seek God's face and ask him what it is that he would have for you in your life right now and if if there's changes that should be made what better time than to make a change we've just had a say law we've had a pause and take this time to evaluate everything put everything under that magnifying glass and ask god is this what you want me to say yes to right now and we must all remember that what we say yes to we're saying no to something else so we have to be sure that we're giving every yes it's the best yes that we would have for our lives and what god would have for us so I just know that living the dream, you may be working, but you will never feel like you're working if you're able to work your dream out in life. And life is short and life is sweet. So give it your all, you know, live God's desire for your life according to his will. But I love you, Lauren. I thank you so much for joining us today. We love all of our friends out there. Thank you for joining us on our well chat today. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.